You want to talk about standing on business? I'm stomping on it. I'm stomping on business. So like, um, hey, it's your girl Nadira P. Welcome back to another video. If you are new here, hello. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're returning. Twin. <laughs> Welcome back, baby. So today's video is going to be a catch up slash Q and A. It's been about over a year now since I've done a sit down video, since I've talked about what I've been up to, where I've been, blah, 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 blah. So I just wanted to do a quick video update. And then at the end of it, I had the girls on Instagram ask me some questions. Um, so I want to answer those. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you should go ahead and follow me. But yeah, let's get into it. So don't mind me holding my phone. It is on a charger because you know it's dying. But I want to look at everything that I have going on because I'm sure it's, there are some things I forgot. And I'm going to remember to include pictures, videos, all types of things. So we can really, truly and honestly catch up just for a disclaimer there may be some things in here that you view as insignificant but they meant a lot to me and they're still my core memories this is going to start from december of 2021 in order for me to paint the whole picture of where i've been what i've been up to so on and so forth we have to go back just that far almost two years or no two years later at this point but let's get into it so december of 2021 I uh there was a brother on Instagram that I had been following for some time he had reached out to me and was like "Sun like um hope all is well what's your number and I'm like I don't know you I was like wake up slam thank you hope all is well with you too crickets cue the crickets because I'm not giving you my number. He just let it go, cool. He liked the message, moved on with his life. Um, then I posted something on my story about romance and he replied to it and was like, oh, I'm Mr. Romance, blah, 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 blah. So we had a cute little conversation. He's like, what's your number? Gave him my number. This was on December 14th of 2021. Mind you, for context, we had been mutuals for a minute now. Um, we had like mutual friends, but I just didn't know him. I'd never met him, whatever, but I had been like, you know, seeing his content, his page and stuff for a minute. So sent him my number December 14th, December 15th. We were talking like all throughout the day. He's like, what you doing tomorrow? I'm like, I ain't doing nothing. He's like, okay, meet me here. We're going out. I said, oh, I guess we're going out. <laughs> um, so December of 2021, I have one of the best dates I've ever had in my life till this day um so cool so december happens everything is cute everything is copacetic now let's move on also that december me and miriam take an impromptu trip to the dmv to be with sadia and hadia we do like a ceramics painting we walk around downtown we get some cupcakes beautiful so january comes January, I have so many family members, so many friends. Both of my parents have birthdays, so this is a jam-packed month. I take my dad out to eat for his birthday. Um, I pay for the whole thing, which is like, it was a big deal because it's the first time in my adult life I had ever done that. January is also Tahira's birthday, so we had a weekend in the Poconos that was so much fun. She had a costume party, but the costume party, you had to dress up as a character whose letter of their first name started with the same letter as her first name. So we all had to dress up as characters that start with T. I was T-Pain. <laughs> we went snow tubing, um, and then for our last night there, we had a party. I was in charge of the tablescape. The girls had to wear all green. We just ate it up, point blank period. Definitely a weekend to remember and something that we still talk about. The rest of January, we're chilling, we're vibing. January, I also started looking at apartments in Philly. At this point, I was ready to move. I was ready to leave the state. I was ready to move on with my life and I was ready to live somewhere different. So. Philly was the first option, the accessibility, the affordability. Yeah, so I also released a whole vlog about that. I'll put a card up here for you to go watch it. It's very funny, if I may say so myself. So yes, February comes along. We're starting the month off strong. Miriam, uh, Maymuna, and Malika surprise me. They take me to a mall that we have out here in Jersey. They take me to an exhibit. They take me out to eat. And we just spend time together. We take pictures. And it was just an all-around fun time 
what else am I doing in February? February is Valentine's Day. I've talked to the girls before. I'm a love fanatic. I love, 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 love. So, um, me and this guy are still dating. This is our first Valentine's Day together. We go out, we have a ball. We do a candle making class. Um, we go out to dinner. We exchange gifts. It's just a great time all around. And you know, as Muslims, once you make it past like the 30 day mark, it's getting serious. So at this point I'm like, mm, I really like him. This same month, I also meet his cousins uh, and we go out to eat. So you know as black people, that's a big deal. You go out and meet somebody's cousin, you, you might as well meet the whole family at that point because the cousins like to talk. So I went out, met his cousin, that was great. Um, that was also a month, Black Muslims Now and Muz had uh, their singles event. And I was at the singles event, not single, because I was there with the person that I was dating. But I wanted to be there because me and Tahira had already talked about it and I wanted to be there for her. And I just wanted to be nosy. So the compromise was that me and him would go together and just act like we don't know each other. It didn't go very well. We're in the event. He's calling me by nicknames. People can tell that you know me. Until this day, the organizers of that event think that me and him met there. Sorry to burst your bubble. We were already together at that point. So February ends out. Um, it's a great month. March comes along. By March, I am feeling very sick. And I know it's in my reproductive system. I had already known at this point, maybe for like two or three years, that I did have uterine fibroids but they were increasingly getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And by this point I was like, okay, we gotta figure something out. I find a black uh, gynecologist by my house. I book an appointment. I go in March, I express my concerns. She listens to me, we do an exam, we do a pap, we do all these other things. She's great, she's amazing. And then we run all these tests uh, she says that the fibroids are pretty big. She reveals to me that I have an 8 inch fibroid and an 11 inch fibroid and everything makes sense. And I will post this picture right here. This is a picture that I posted or that I took um, the weekend of Tahira's birthday. Everyone kept saying, oh my god, are you pregnant? Are you pregnant? Are you pregnant? Because I won't fault people. I do look pregnant. However, should you be making commentary about my body or anybody else's? No. Because though I was like trying not to let it bother me, it did bother me a lot for people to accuse me of being pregnant. Especially knowing like how much people will shame you for having a baby out of wedlock when you're a Muslim. So I just didn't like it. I didn't appreciate it. But it was the fact that it was fibroids. And I looked pregnant because I had two fibroids in my uterus and they were so big to the point where I had the uterus of a woman that was 20 weeks pregnant. So yes, I did look pregnant. <laughs> and I felt pregnant um, because I'm carrying around these two big fibroids. So what do we have? We have um, March. I also have three younger cousins, all of them under the ages of nine. I had them for 10 days in March of 2022. Their parents went to Umrah. So that was a treat. Like you would be surprised how much you learn from children. Or maybe you won't be surprised, but you learn so much from children like it's absolutely insane so having them for those days was amazing april rolls around and i'm feeling horrible my periods are getting worse i'm bleeding i'm spotting all the time i'm not having a good time i have numbness in my legs i have extreme pain in my abdomen it's just not going well so ramadan is also here and i still say now based upon how i was feeling i truly do not believe i should have been fasting I'm not gonna lie. And the fact that fasting can be very healing, but if you have the wrong thing and you are fasting, fasting can exacerbate what you are already feeling. So I truly don't believe that I should have been fasting, but alhamdulillah, I mean, I was. April comes around, I'm still with this brother. We are still going strong. We are getting serious. I have my annual iftar at my house, which is a beautiful time. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I still think to this day that's the most amount of people I've ever had in my home at one time. Alhamdulillah, we have the space for it. Um, but we have my annual iftar. My man comes. He meets my friends. Meeting my friends is a big deal. Like, I, I want y'all to understand that. My friends, I hold them to such a high regard that, like, when it's time to meet my friends, I'm shaking in my boots. Because if my friends come who I know, I trust their judgment, they have my best interest um, at heart, 
they're not gonna play around. So I'm nervous, I'm shaking in my boots. He's cool as a cucumber. He's meeting everybody, he's talking to everybody. He's charming, he's sweet. By the end of the night, everybody loves him. Everybody's in love with him. Everybody's texting me afterwards like, oh my God, I love him. I'm like, Ugh, tell me about it. <laughs> so, alhamdulillah, we got through that. What else happens? Yeah, so the rest of that is just Ramadan. We're fasting, we're cooling. Everything is great. Eid al-Fitr was in May. I got to spend it with my family down south. I wanted him to come with me, but he really wanted to be with his family. So I was like, okay, cool, no problem. Inshallah for the next Eid. So everything is cool, calm and collected for May. We have the Black Muslims now, and they collaborated with another group in New York to do this event. That was really nice. My two beautiful friends in May of 2022 married each other, Malik and Hussein, wedding of the century wedding of the century beautiful 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 we had her amazing bridal shower at my home which i was also in charge of and then we had her wedding the wedding was great the wedding was amazing the wedding was beautiful what else happened in may oh me and tahira went to as we went to los angeles i went and did the halaliwood show that was organized by um Hollywood, aka omar regan i did that along with preacher moss moses the comic azim and Yasmin and Hadi, so that was the time. Tahir was also there at the same time she was visiting LA, so we got to be um, together with each other there. I also got some henna done by Miriam, which Miriam does henna if nobody knows that, and it's a style that I'm absolutely in love with. I went to try this black Muslim owned restaurant that is halal in Brooklyn called Black Nile. That meal single handedly changed the trajectory of my life amazing 10 out of 10 would recommend i went to central park for the first time central park is right in new york city i'm in jersey for the first time in my life i went to central park with my man of course and i had a blast had a ball loved it 10 out of 10 20 out of 20. oh yes and then we went to ichna mass me and tahir together it was a great weekend we had a lot of fun we got to see native dean perform live if you are a black muslim girl that has been a black muslim girl for forever you know Native Dean had the girls rocking. Um, June comes around, my beautiful friends Sophia and Dan get married, so I'm in the DMV for that. While I'm in the DMV for that, I have a sinus infection. Mind you, this is at a time where the girls that know, know, we're still worried about COVID. I have a sinus infection where I can't taste. Now, prior to this wedding, I'm getting COVID tested like crazy. I got PCPs, I got rapids, I got everything. I went to the hospital, I got tested. It wasn't strep, it wasn't the flu. It was a sinus infection and it literally made my life a living hell um so after i get back from the wedding i have a doctor's appointment to go over the results of my ultrasounds to go over my new blood test results and i want to say at this time i want to say june of 2022 is the first time that i went in for a blood transfusion um i had been bleeding so much i had been spotting so much I was just not doing well. So I went to the hospital, lo and behold, I had to get a blood transfusion. And then I had to see my doctor again. June of 2022 was also the first time I went to a Juneteenth celebration. It was me, Miriam, Tahira, and Maymuna. I believe Maymuna was there. Was she there? Okay, I don't know. I don't have no pictures of her. But for the sake of the story, we're gonna say that Maymuna was there. The rest of June, I chilled out, but I was increasingly becoming more and more sick and that was really worrying me. So at this point, I'm seeing my doctor pretty often. I'm seeing my doctor pretty often um, to just let her know like, hey girl, I'm feeling bad. And yeah july comes july of 2022 i see my doctor again to let her know i had to have a blood transfusion we do some more tests she lets me know she highly suggests an abdominal myomectomy to remove the fibroids i come out of the doctor's office that miriam had driven me to i have a whole breakdown because nobody likes to be in pain but the way that being in long-term physical pain greatly deteriorates my mental health worries me it makes me anxious because i don't know what or like how long i'm going to be sick i don't know how sick i'm going to be i'm not feeling well i can't do anything i can't go anywhere my livelihood my money depends on me being well me being alert me being ready so for the majority of this year 
so from December of 2021 till July of 2022, I'd only did one show because I was so sick. Like there was nothing else that I could really do um, except for one show. So I'm, I'm already feeling the effects. Hey girl, it's Editing Nadira here. I see that I forgot to include the amazing opportunity I had to film the Rami after show. So if you check out season three, uh, I believe my episode is called like the American dream is not real or something like that. You can see me on there. Bye girl. So we have Eid al-Adha, um, me and the brother are going strong. Around Eid al-Fitr, I had told my family about him, showed them pictures. July of 2022, I take him to meet my family. We go to eat a lot together. It's a beautiful time. He meets my family. We spend the whole day with family and friends. He's amazing about it. Other than that, I'm just outside. I'm outside the whole of July. I'm just outside. I'm having a blast. I'm having a ball. I'm at this event. I'm at that event. I'm here. I'm there. I'm just having a great time. We also go to the DMV again to celebrate my beautiful friend Hadia's birthday. And then we also attend an event that was put on by the Digital Sisterhood. They came to Jersey, the girls showed up and showed out, and alhamdulillah, I was able to host that. Around this time again, I'm still so very sick, I'm still so extremely disoriented. And then towards the end of July, we officially scheduled my abdominal myomectomy for October of 2022. Uh, towards the end of that month, another friend gets married, another friend has a baby shower, the girls are living it up. August comes around. Again, I have an official date for my surgery, but I know when the fibroids come out, I'm gonna look different, I'm gonna feel different, so I wanna get my body ready. So August starts. I'm trying to eat better, I'm exercising regularly, I'm going on walks, I'm doing my breathing, all the things. At this point, me and my man at this time were featured in an art exhibit together, which was a total surprise. We went to something that he was being featured in and they had a picture that they had taken of the both of us in this exhibit. So cool, that was cute, that was, you know, that was a moment. August, I also go to Chicago to see all of my Jarrell folks. That is a Black Muslim Youth Fellowship that I had been a part of, I wanna say in like 2017, 2018, maybe earlier. And we had a reunion in Chicago and I got to go, I got to see all the people and I got to spend a few days in Chicago. The rest of August is spent chilling, attended another wedding, not a surprise. Um, attended a birthday dinner, and other than that, I'm just chilling. I'm in the gym, I'm trying to work out, I'm trying to do my thing, I'm having a time, I'm with my man, okay? With my man, period. Um, What happens after that? Okay, we have September. That was it for August. September comes, I do my first international show, international, in Mississauga, Canada. I go to the Muslim Fest out there. I have a show, the first and last time I will ever perform outside. Comedy is just not, an outside kind of activity. People are running around, nobody's listening. It was horrible. But I was happy to be there and I could finally say, oh, I performed internationally. Um, September, I also go for the first time to have dinner with my man's family, which that goes great. It's a fun time. The day before my birthday, I have a doctor's appointment to receive a shot that is supposed to put me on a medical menopause for three months. For three months i forget the name of the medicine i go to the doctor i get the shot um immediately i feel horrible i feel horrible i feel despicable my abdomen feels tight it feels tense i'm not feeling well but it's okay my birthday is the next day i have a brunch planned so i'm not i'm not even paying that no mind okay so i get the shot get up the next day it's my birthday i get ready for the brunch we have an all pink theme going on i invite all the ladies they come to my house we have brunch we dance we sing i get gifts i just have a beautiful time and i will never ever ever forget to tell you guys how amazing my friends are and they showed up and showed out for me when i tell you them ladies packed down my house from 10 to 5 <laughs> because after that i had to be out with my man after my birthday dinner, I go, out. after my birthday brunch, excuse me, I go out with my man, we go to dinner, we go to a comedy show, I get proposed to. 
I get proposed to, I'm through the moon, I'm ecstatic, I'm excited. I am just like, wow. Like when he proposed, I never thought I was gonna be that kind of girl. I cried, cause I'm like, oh my God. So after that, um, the rest of September, I'm on a high. I'm on a high, naturally so. I, I just got <laughs> proposed to, be serious. I'm somebody's fiance. I have a fiance, somebody's my fiance. Somebody wants to marry me and they asked me and I said, yeah. Um, so by this time, it's no secret, actually many months, well not many, but some months before this, I'm already in love. I'm in love, it's full-fledged, it's full-blown. Um, I'm going through it. Later in that September, I also submit finally an inquiry to a business to find a therapist. And in September, I got accepted, I got assigned someone, and I start therapy later in September. Um, so that's a very big deal. I immediately go to therapy and the girls are having a time. The, our first session, she does like a consultation style type of thing. Just even in that first session, I'm going through so much because like there's so many things that I had to tell her about that I haven't spoken of since they happened. So just having to be open and honest and vulnerable with this stranger was a lot for me. But the main reason I had started therapy, I'd had an event in my family that really like, it like, it felt like I had like been pushed back into the time when I was a little girl and all of these feelings were coming up for me and I pretty much cried every day for a month straight because of what had happened. And I also truly believed um, that my fibroids had been caused by my inability or my unwillingness to work through my problems and my traumas, point blank period. Because the fact of the matter is, fibroids are caused by a hormonal imbalance. And that can be through food, that can be through stress, that can be through all types of feelings and emotions and different components. And for a very long time, when I think of when I found out I had fibroids versus when they got so big, I was under so much stress, I was facing so many issues, I had so much adversity in my life that I just wasn't addressing. I just wasn't acknowledging. Um, so I wanted to start therapy to gain the tools to work through what it is that I felt I needed to work through in my life. So later on in September, we start um, therapy. October comes around and we're chilling, we're mobbing, we're having a good time. I'm still on a high about the fact that I'm somebody's fiance, point blank, and the purr. And then again, my surgery is scheduled for October 24th. So October 17th, I go to the doctors, I get some blood work done, then I go see my gynecologist because we have to do the last check-in before my surgery. She, mind you, I had gotten that medical menopause shot September 10th. September 17th, I began to bleed profusely and I proceeded to bleed from September 17th until October 17th. October 17th, I go to the doctor. She's like, hey, I got your blood work results. Your hemoglobin levels are at a six. I said, okay, where are they supposed to be at? She was like a 10 to a 12. So she's like, why are your hemoglobin levels so low? And I said, well, I got that medical menopause shot and I bled for a month straight. And she, and mind you, when I had looked up the shot, Many women were saying that this had happened to them. So imagine my surprise when I tell her, well, after I got the shot, I bled for a month straight. She said, what? I said, yes. I called your colleague who was the emergency doctor after I began to bleed and she told me that it was normal. My doctor says, what? That's not normal at all. So now I'm freaking out because she's freaking out because she was like, your hemoglobin levels are at a six. When your hemoglobin levels hit a five, you're at the risk of heart failure and a stroke. And I'm like, girl, I wish somebody would have told me that. And I could have had that little situation handled. So she's freaking out, I'm freaking out. But again, I'm feeling so sick. I didn't bled for a whole month straight. I finally stopped. The one thing I wanna do is get something to eat, get in my bed and get ready for this surgery. Girl, she was like, you need to go to the hospital. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go, you know, tomorrow. She said, you'll go tomorrow? I said, yeah. She said, I'm gonna put on your medical record 
that I instructed you to go to the hospital. She was like, if she was like, you can go home, you can do whatever you want. But if something happens to you, I will not be liable because I told you to go to the hospital. So once she said that girl, it scared me straight. I take my butt to the hospital. I had my dad take me actually. So I had had a blood transfusion before, but when I had one before, I got one bag of fluid. This time I had to get two bags. So I get to the hospital at like 10 o'clock. I'm there till like six in the morning. And my dad just sat outside in the waiting room while I was there. God bless him. So we got through that. Everything was cool. I'm just cleaning my room. I'm like writing a will just in case, you know, anything could have happened in that surgery could have went wrong. I'm emotionally preparing myself for the fact that they might go in to do the surgery and might have to give me a whole hysterectomy. And you know, I'm a woman that I think one day I want to have kids. Um, so I'm going through these things, doing all these things. Thankfully, I have a therapist at this point. So me and her are talking through a lot, which I'm super thankful for. October 24th, 5 o'clock in the morning. I get ready. I pack my bag. I get my things. My hair is washed. My body is moisturized. I'm, I do an everything shower, shave down everything. My mother takes me to the hospital. I get scrubbed in. I get checked in. And I have the surgery. Well, alhamdulillah, al alameen. Thank you, God. It goes well. I wake up, I want to say maybe nine, ten hours later. If you want to watch a story time on my surgery, I will link it below the Instagram live that I did on my page if you want to hear all about my surgery. Um, but it went well. And the days after that, so I had my surgery October 24th. They told me I was going home on the 26th. I didn't go home until the 28th. So I spent agonizing days in pain. I don't have an appetite, I can't fart, I can't pee by myself, I can't get up, I can't walk around, I can't do any of it. They're forcing me to walk around because I have to walk around, but I don't want to because I'm in so much pain. But alhamdulillah, my family, my friends, my man, everybody showed up for me, everybody showed out, 10 out of 10. So I finally get home, and the day I get home, my grandma comes, she makes me a meal, and reluctantly, I began to eat and it's like all the gas was coming out and I was just so thankful. Tahira shows up that day because she's the one that's gonna be there with me because my mom and my brother, they still work and go to school so they, they wouldn't be able to stay there all that time. And it was pure hell. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I can't sugarcoat it. Uh, Tahira would sleep in my room because I wasn't able to get up the stairs and get in my bed. So I was like, hey, you come sleep in my bed and I'll just stay in the living room. I would either like sleep sitting up on the couch or I'd try to like lay down on the floor. And every night that she would come up here, I would just cry because I was in such agonizing pain. I was uncomfortable, I couldn't sleep. They gave me um, Percocets, which for those of you that don't know, they make all your food taste nasty and they give you nightmares. So I, I don't understand how that's a recreational drug. Maybe I wasn't taking enough. For it to be fun, I literally took that the first night. I had such a bad nightmare. I never took it again. So I'm in here, fresh cut. The tape ain't even came off yet. Barely bathing because I couldn't. Barely going to the bathroom, barely moving. And I'm just in pain because I refuse to take any pain medicine. Um, so it was hell. It was hell, it was hell. Finally, November comes, we have a breakthrough. I'm feeling better, I start healing up, I'm going to the bathroom regularly, I'm releasing gas. I go out for the first time, I go to Target, I still get the wheelchair, that was a bad idea. And my friends were like, we don't think you should go out. I'm like, take me out, take me out, I wanna go out. We just took a ride to Target. When I tell you every bump we hit on that road, even the slightest bump, made me feel like I was bursting from the inside out. It was not a good idea. I spent the whole next day just sick, just paying for it. Um, but I start to go for walks and that helps a lot with releasing gas, with using the bathroom. My man is coming over, he comes over, he walks with me. Um, I really go out and about, I go to the mall for the first time. So at that point that I went to the mall, I had been like a month since my surgery. So I'm not feeling good, but I'm feeling a lot better. So I'm excited to be outside. Uh, and that's it for November. We're just going through the motions. It's pure hell. I'm obsessed with juice and sour candy. So I'm downing every ounce of juice in the world. I'm also spending a lot of time crying because I just feel light. 
and I just feel better and this is everything that I really really wanted and really really needed and I'm crying because I am still suffering recovering from surgery is not a joke and I feel so alone in it um and I was alone in it and Allah was with me and he was really showing me all the mercy in the world so yes also that November uh as you guys know I'm half Haitian the Haitian side of my family with the exception of my father are not Muslims so that Thanksgiving I take my man to my Haitian family's house to meet them he loves them he loves them they love him all of that goes great now towards the end of November um my drum engaged and my man wanted to get married before my surgery but I was like hey at my wedding I want to look my best I want to feel my best as a a newlywed woman give me to after my surgery and we will get married he held true to his word he supported me he loved me he cared for me he was kind to me so best believe the end of November came and I started to feel better I got right into wedding planning mm -hmm. I didn't have no job to be at couldn't hardly move couldn't hardly walk wasn't feeling great all I had time to do was to tap away at the computer and find a way to marry this man that I was madly in love with. So I start wedding planning, we get a budget, we get a theme, we get colors, we find vendors, we do all the things. December comes around, the beginning of December, I finally take my mom to meet his mom. It was a beautiful time, we talk about weddings. But at this point, we're starting to do the back and forth. We're starting to do the back and forth. I want this, he wants that, his mom wants this, my mom wants that, my dad wants this, his family wants that. But I don't mind it because I'm like, I don't care about none of this. At the end of the day, I'm going to get my man. It don't matter. Like, I don't care about none of this back and forth. Two things I'm going to do, I'm going to get my way and I'm going to get my man. Okay? So, December comes around. We celebrate a year of dating. Everything is copacetic. I'm feeling 2 million percent better. Not 100%, but I would say by that December, I was at least at like 70, 75 so yes, the new year comes, alhamdulillah, I'm outside, I'm moving around, I'm having the best time, I'm feeling amazing, I'm cooking again, I'm having people over, I'm having a blast. I had Muhammad and them over for brunch, we celebrated Tahira's birthday, we went to this really good halal, it's not a halal steakhouse, but they carry halal uh, steak and chicken and lamb, I believe. That January of 2023, I also go to the MoMA for the first time. I go to this um, halal Italian spot in Brooklyn. Girl, it was good. That January, I also start planning a surprise 50th birthday party for my uncle. And I'm very excited because we're surprising my uncle and my uncle really deserves it. But I'm also very excited because the rest of my family is going to get to meet my man. So I'm like ecstatic. Mind you, they know about him. They've been meeting him slowly, but surely. But I'm like, this is the first time we get to pop out in front of my family as a couple. That January, I also have my first show. Since my surgery, it was kind of a show. I was more so like hosting. Um, I think it was like the Muslim Women's Conference or whatever. I have that show and my man comes along and he gets to meet like my colleagues for the first time so i get to introduce him i was like hey this is my fiance whatever whatever it was cute or whatever the rest of january just goes by we're getting real serious with the wedding planning because we're planning for february it's already january but by the end of january we saw everything that went into it and how much money we were actually going to need and we were like hey february is not going to work let's do march so um, we reschedule everything. So I got to call around and tell everybody, hey, it's okay, babe. It won't be in February. February starts. Everything is cool, calm, and copacetic. I'm excited to celebrate the second Valentine's Day with my man. Again, we had had a lot of back and forth about this wedding, about this wedding, about this wedding. So February 7th of 2023 comes along and I get a call from my man and he asked me about something we had been going back and forth on and whether I would agree to what he wanted. And I said, no, I do not agree. And he broke up with me. He broke up with me um, on that phone call in a random February <laughs> of 2023. 
he ended our relationship. Just right then and there, just ended it. Um, I remember we were on the call and I remember I asked him, I was like, so you mean it? Like you want to end this? And I just remember him saying, unfortunately, and I said, click, hung up the phone and blocked him on everything. And it was like the biggest, it is in fact the biggest heartbreak I've ever suffered romantically. And in that moment, I remember just, I just sat there and I stared at the wall for like an hour because mentally I was having such a problem like trying to realize if this was real or not so yeah um that was February 7th I don't think I told anybody until like February 10th I waited some days and I waited and waited and waited and waited and I told Miriam, I think Miriam was the first person that I told. Um, and Miriam knows how much I love Valentine's Day, but the day before Valentine's Day, February 13th, is Black Love Day. And my man was one of those people of like, um, oh, I don't want to do Valentine's Day Islamically. So I was like, okay, let's do Black Love Day. And I had been telling Miriam how excited I was for Black Love Day because I was with somebody, I was in love, we were getting married. Um, and I was like, I'm just very excited to celebrate love. And I was like, I'm gonna make it super cute. So when I called and told her that we weren't together anymore, he had broken up with me, Miriam sent me some flowers for Black Love Day. Now mind you, between February 7th and February 13th, I got my period so I was especially emotional about it but I was kind of still holding on to hope I was like kind of being like no he's gonna come around he's gonna call me he's gonna stop by the house he's gonna something but when the 12th had come and I didn't get any Valentine's Day plans I didn't get any like anything I was like oh this is really over so I had spent the 12th and the 13th just in tears. So when she sent me the flowers, I thought she was just sending me the flowers to be nice. But then I called her and I'm like, you sent me flowers? And she's like, yeah, for Black Love Day. And I just, I just bawled. I just bawled, like I just spent, I think I spent the rest of the day <laughs> just crying. And even now, like I'm getting emotional about it because what a sincere like type of love like for her to step in like that when she did not need to insanity so by february 14th i'm getting vengeful i'm getting vengeful and i was like you know what he doesn't want to be my man that's fine but i'm gonna be a hot gal i'm gonna be a hot gal so I'm looking up like different Eid outfits and different things to wear because I'm like this Eid and this Ramadan and this summer is it's just going to be my time. I'm popping out. Forget him. Blah, blah, blah. I was in the stage of denial. February 18th comes along. We surprised my uncle and I had told all my family that he was going to be there. So February 18th, I had to break it to my family that we were no longer together. And that was a whole ordeal. That was a whole moment that hated it hated it hated it hated it so for the remainder of february from the 18th until the end of the month i was in shambles i was in tears truly and honestly i was i was just in tears like there was nothing that i could do there was nothing that i could say i was just accepting the fact that this whole relationship that i cherish so much this person that i thought I was gonna marry all of this was just over it was just over it was just done um march comes along good sister friend of mine gets married so i attended another wedding we also go to an all-girls party so this is like the first time that i'm like popping out 
since my surgery. It's an all girls party in Philly. Um, I got my hair done. I got my hair braided. I, like the surgery, like the fibroids had gone down so much. It looked like I got my body done. Okay. I was looking good. I was feeling good. I had nails on. I had my jewelry on. I had hair done, nails and everything. Did. I was feeling myself. I was on 10. Um, and at this point, this was March 4th that we had this party. So exactly a month. So March 7th. It had been a month. I hadn't spoken to my ex. Hadn't seen him. Had nothing. So I call him. And I'm like, hey, it's been a month. I've taken some time, you've taken some time. Are you still standing on what you said? And he says, have you changed your mind about what I asked you? And I said, no. And he said, well, I'm still standing on what I said. And I said, okay, so I'm like him. He said, well, like him, Sam, hung up the phone, blocked him on everything again. Blocked him on everything again. And then I proceeded to subtweet him. I wasn't subtweeting him. I was subtweeting him. So March keeps going. I'm in the thicket of grief, but I get to go out and be amongst community at the Muslim Voices of Newark symposium that happened at the Newark Museum. Uh, I get to go with my sweet grandma. I get to see my friends. I get to watch a great documentary. I went to the NYU Black Muslim Initiative, uh, their Black History Month symposium. Got to be with my friends then. I'm popping out. I'm feeling good. I'm getting to the place with grieving my relationship where I'm accepting it. You get me? Like, I'm accepting it. I'm accepting it. I'm accepting it. What's happening the rest of March? Oh, Ramadan starts. Ramadan starts that March. So, it is, um... My first Ramadan since my surgery and I'm feeling a lot better. I'm feeling a lot better. And I think it wasn't until that Ramadan where I wasn't feeling good that I was like, hmm, maybe I should not have done that last Ramadan. Uh, so that bleeds over into April. Feeling good, looking better. I'm eating, I'm spending time with friends, the whole shebang. I'm going to the DMV, like we're traveling for iftars. We're doing all types of things. And I have my annual iftar and it is an absolute blast. But I go through the course of grief with that because we were supposed to have been married by Ramadan and I had made all of these plans for our first Ramadan together. So going through the grief of the fact that this Ramadan is nothing like I was expecting it to be, but it was a blast. And then, Girl, not me forgetting about Eid. Um, so you know I had to pop out with the all green, with the gold, with the henna, period. Everything that I have on from my henna to my outfit to my jewelry is from a Muslim woman-owned business. So if you want to know, let me know and I got you with the link. May comes around. What happens in May? I'm still with my brother primarily. And finally, finally, after literally I want to say four months of looking, I get a nine to five. I get a nine to five. I forgot to mention, very big, at the end of 2022, I had made the decision to stop doing influencer and comedy work full time for a plethora of reasons. I had decided to quit the game. So I wanna say in February after my breakup until May, I was looking for a job, looking for a job, looking for a job. Finally, May 9th, I start a position doing customer service at an HVAC company. And I'm finally making money. I'm able to buy the things I like. I'm buying things for my brother. I'm ready to do all type of things. I'm ready to do all types of things. I start being open on my social media about my breakup, about like all these various kind of things. What else happens in May? There's something else. My brother graduates from the eighth grade in May and Oh, I feature on a program at Mash It A Law. I do a segment about Dura and really asking for what it is that you want. Me, Miriam, Maymuna, Muhammad, and Malika, we all go to Ikna Mass in Baltimore. We have an amazing time. Um, and then June rolls around and I'm trying to get ready for 
the second E. I'm still spending a host amount of time with my brother. I'm working. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling amazing. I'm having the time of my life. I'm getting my nails done. I'm getting my hair did. I'm taking care of myself. I'm raising the standards of living. I'm deciding what it is that I want for my life. And I'm just outside, point blank, period. Me and Tahira go to some events together. Another one of my little cousins uh, graduate from high school. I have an Eid party for my family, which is very nice, very beautiful. We get to cut a cake for my brother and my two cousins that graduated. I'm outside, I go to a family barbecue. I'm feeling amazing. In July, I also attend the Eid Gala in New York. Tahira leaves to go to Columbia. So I'm having a moment with that, realizing I have to spend all these months without her. I go to a brunch with the cousins on my mother's side. Um, literally, girls that I grew up with and we are all women now. So that was very nice. July, I take a trip to Chicago to the Black Muslim Psychology Conference. And um, I'm doing a panel there. I'm with my friends, I'm with my community, I'm with my folks. I'm having a ball, I'm having a blast. Just enjoying my time with black Muslims and I look amazing. Let's start there, I look amazing. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else? Hey girl, it's Editing Nadira here um, and I forgot to include that I also got the opportunity to perform at the Riata in Philadelphia and that was a really big deal because it went really great. All right, back to our regularly scheduled programming yeah that's it august me and my friends are outside we went skating not long after that we had a beach day and then i go to detroit to host their block party i get to see freeway perform live um i get to see a bunch of other great performers i get to see ain't afraid one of my friends from jersey suhaila actually ends up linking with me out there because her and her family were there i'm still working but by August, I figure out that I actually don't like my job and I actually want another one. And I remember being like, oh, Allah, like, I'm super grateful, but I think I want something else. And I feel like as a spiritual person, it has been important for me to stay in this level of, Lord, I'm, I'm truly grateful, but also, Lord, I want more. And anytime I'm praying, I always, before I ask for more, I said, oh, Allah, Make me of those who are grateful so that you may give me more. And then I tell Allah what I want and what I need him to give me. I mean, I mean, I mean. So August is cute. It's a blast. It's a time. It's a moment. Mind you, throughout the years, if you haven't noticed, I've been giving the girls very cute. I've been giving the girls very beautiful. I've been living it up. What else happens in August? I forgot to add that part in there. August, I finally meet up with my ex we have a conversation i cry and i just have this sense of relief because i find out what really happened why it really happened so on and so forth um so in september we're not the best of friends but we're cool uh so we text here and there we talk here and there the like kind of final bit of my closures i send him a bunch of tiktoks that made me think of him so that was cool so that's it for august september rolls around my brother starts high school and i'm applying for new jobs like crazy i don't even remember what it was but i remember i went into my job they pissed me off and i start looking for new jobs immediately so at least 10 jobs a day over the course of two months i had applied to pff, over 300 400 jobs I'm getting no's, no's, no's. I'm getting fake interviews. I'm getting scam calls. I'm getting all these things. September, um, me and the girls also decide that October of 2023, we're going to London. So literally within the span of the week, I call the group chat. I'm like, hey, I'm going to London. What's popping? Where y'all at? The girls was like, well, if you slot in London, I'm sliding in London. So literally within the span of two weeks, we bought tickets. We booked a hotel. We planned outfits immediately. So I'm in overdrive. Okay, I'm in overdrive. I'm looking at outfits. I'm bookmarking things. I'm buying things. I'm spending money. I'm spending money. Mind you, I got a job now. Within one paycheck, I created a whole new lifestyle for myself. Okay? Um, my birthday comes. And if you haven't watched my birthday vlog, 
watch my birthday vlog. But my birthday comes, I turn 27. And it is the most beautiful birthday I've ever had. After my 25th and 26th, when I tell y'all, that was the first time in my adult life that I remember ever feeling so content and so happy with the life that Allah had given me. To the point where for my birthday, I told everybody, I don't want any gifts, don't buy me any gifts. I literally have everything that I need. And I meant that physically, I meant that mentally and emotionally, I meant that spiritually. I just felt so very complete that I was like, I don't even need a gift. I don't even want a gift. Of course, people were calling, they were texting, and that's really what meant the world to me. But yeah, it was just, it was just a time. And I'm still so thankful to Allah. I run a group for black Muslim youth called the Black Seeds here in Jersey. We had a skating event, which was a blast. And what else did we do? We had a skating event. I proceeded to get a bunch of calls from an unknown number, from an un unidentifiable voice, asking me weird questions and saying weird things, whatever. October, oh, we go to London, we have a blast. I hope that if you're watching this video, that means you already watched the London vlog because girl, we had a time. So yes, we go to London, that's the highlight of the month. I come back from London, I'm still working. I find out that after I had put in my request, a month prior. So I went to London October 12th. I put in my request September 10th. I go to London. It didn't get approved or denied. My boss saw it, so I figured, okay, he must know. I come back from London to find out. He proceeds to say he never knew that I was taking that time off. Mind you, my coworkers had to rearrange the schedule to make sure that I was covered. And he wanted to tell me he didn't know I was taking time off. Whatever. I proceed to look for jobs. I'm going hard in the paint. I'm looking for jobs, I'm looking for jobs, I'm looking for jobs. November comes around, um, I start doing some freelance work for a small business, and I'm just absolutely losing my mind looking for jobs. Two other great friends of mine, Willa and Kareem, get married. What else? I finally learned what it means to stand on business. I had started, I met this guy in London, we had started texting. I got very friendly vibes. I'm not looking for any more friends. I asked him if he was looking for a friend. He said, yeah, we're friends. I said, no, we're not because I'm looking for a man. He said, okay, I understand. And that felt good to finally be standing in my truth. November, two of my lovely friends had a baby. So we had a party to celebrate their baby. What else did I do? I was on the third party podcast with Mohsen and Ra'id. I will also link that below. Follow them, support them, listen to them. Yes, the end of November, I catch COVID again. It was not, mind you, I've been to a bunch of events that had the potential to be super spreaders. No, I got it from one person, which I still feel so bad that they even had to go through that. Um, so that happened in the end of November. A week before I got COVID, I heard back from a job. They were like, they must, they emailed me on like a Tuesday and was like, can you come in for an interview on Friday? And it was at a time that I had work. And I was like, of course. I told my job, I have to come in late and I have to leave early. Left early, went to the interview, got the job. Got the job doing social media for a group of healthcare offices. Making almost double my former salary. When I literally, I remember praying at the beginning of November, I was making tahajjud, I was making all types of duas, and I was like, Allah, by the end of November, please give me a different job. But as the days went on, and I was getting weary, but in addition to that, when you ask for something, you still don't know how or when Allah is gonna give it to you. So you can become worried. And it's not that you doubt God, you just don't know what his plan is. So as the days go on, I'm like, Okay, a lot. If not by the end of November, at least by the end of the year. November, what? Let me look at the dates. The Friday of November 24th, I got a new job. I got a new job. And then the week after that, I got another car. 
So November, Allah really, Allah was always showing out, but Allah really, he really did his thug fizzle. So that's it for November. Valentine's Day, I got, not Valentine's Day. Why am I thinking about Valentine's Day? Um, Thanksgiving, I got to spend with Miriam and her beautiful family. Um, December comes around. I start my new position. Everything is cool, calm, and collected. I finally post my London vlog. And then now we are here, December 18th of 2023, almost at a new year. And I'm feeling good, feeling great, feeling amazing. Allah has been kind, Allah has been merciful. And as I sit here and I reflect on my year, I cannot help but think about the fact that this was both one of the worst and one of the best years of my life. Like, please understand the fact that I'm recovering from a heartbreak that was so massive that it kind of like encapsulated everything. Um, and I, ca I couldn't help but think, because I always feel like there's a reason for everything, I couldn't help but think like, what did I lose in that heartbreak? What did I gain? What was the reason for it? And we're talking about February of 2023. I was piss poor, I was dead broke with not even a penny to, and I'm not exaggerating, not even a penny to my name. The man that I was madly in love with, that I thought I was gonna marry, left me. I had no money, I had no car, I'm in my mama's house, I have no job, and I barely have my health. To December of 2023, I haven't fully healed from that breakup, but I'm almost healed from it. I have a car, I have a new job that I love, and I'm almost out my mama house. So if nothing else was gained from that situation, I truly do not fear anything but Allah. Like I thought before, I was that girl. I thought before, I was like, oh yeah, I'm with everything, I don't care. I'm Now, oh, oh, I, I, I can't be messed with. I can't be messed with. I swear for God, now, compared to Nadira just a few months ago, oh, especially the fact that I'm 27, and I don't know what it is that's happening, but everybody's 27th year is transformational. Within these few months that I've been 27, oh, I can't be messed with. You wanna talk about standing on business? I'm stomping on it. I'm stomping on business. Girl. Um, but alhamdulillah, we're, we're thankful for the good times and we're thankful for the better times. And we're thankful for the bad times and we pray for ease. I mean, I mean, I mean. So yes, that is my year. Thank you guys so much for tagging along, but let's get into the Q&A. So somebody said, what age do you wanna get married? The age where I'll be the happiest and the most content and the most ready, whenever that may be. And even if that age is not meant for this life, I just wanna be loved well. It would be nice in this life, but a lot, if Allah is saving something special for me in the next, so be it. Are you planning another birthday party this year? No, I did not have another birthday party this year. I had birthday parties the last two years. They were great, they were amazing, they were beautiful, and they were extremely stressful. How are you doing with the new job and the routine? They asked me this about my old job, but with my new, new job, I'm doing good. This is my, I believe this is my third week at this job, and alhamdulillah, it's going well. Do you still communicate with your ex? At this time, no. We're not talking, mainly because I don't feel like we have anything to talk about. I really don't. I really don't. Like, I don't wanna be buddy, buddy, friendly old pal. I wanted a husband. And you couldn't or you didn't deliver on that, which is like, alhamdulillah, you're a person, you have a right to do whatever it is that's good for you, but ain't gonna be no in between, ain't gonna be no sometimes, ain't gonna be no nothing. Somebody said, tell us something you thought you would never say out loud. I always thought that like love was the priority in marriage, but now I understand why people don't. 
Um, how to stay healthy, get that bag, keep high any man while in school as well. Prioritize your time and understand that this is really a law making things happen for you. So that should get you to a place of relaxing. Do what it is that you can, but don't try to save the world. Like do what you can, handle your responsibilities, prioritize your time and your responsibilities. But after a certain point, let go and let God. Um, somebody said, what made you realize a friendship had died and there was no coming back? Once they began to very easily disrespect me. Like once they just began to spew insults and not even think twice about it. I said, oh yeah, this is over. Somebody said, how to know when it's time to leave a situation versus having sabr and weathering through it? Prayer? I would say ask Allah to make things very clear to you. And one thing that I always say, oh Allah, if it's not good for me, turn my heart away from it. And when I tell you I've made that dua before bed and I've woken up in the morning to me feeling very different. Like about the person, about the situation, about the opportunity, about the job, all of that. Someone said, inshallah, you are well. Since you on a nine to five grind, have you considered marketing brand management? I'm in brand management. That's crazy. Why did you move out when you just got a job? No hate. I wasn't moved out, girl. Y'all know these doors. I'm still at my mom's house. Someone said, I just like you. Thank you. Someone said, how to deal with low iman because you haven't found your person yet. It's unbearable. I feel like I'm looked at as being broken or unfortunate because it hasn't happened. Oof. That's heavy. I would say for that, number one, you must explore why is your iman so attached to you getting what you want. That's very important to explore. You having low iman because you don't have what you want is worrisome. And we may need to focus more on our spirituality. And if the situation is that dire, that your iman is becoming low because of something that you want that Allah hasn't given you yet, you need to deal with that. Um, <clears throat> but I don't want to be dumb and I don't want to be dense. We do all become susceptible to lowering Iman or feeling differently when Allah is not answering a certain prayer. And that's not good. It's a very human reaction, but it's not a good reaction because Allah is your God. You are not his God. That's number one. And when we say we put our trust in Allah, that means that we trust that things will happen when it is best. And the when may not be right now, and the how may not be how you want it, and the where may not be where you expect it, and the who may not be who you thought it was going to be. But when you say you trust Allah, that means you let go and you let God. So you may be having low Iman, not because you're necessarily upset with Allah, but because you're trying to control the situation and Allah is not following your script because Allah is God. So you're becoming frustrated because you're like, why are my prayers being answered? But it's not even the fact that it's something that you're praying for. It's the fact that you're trying to control it. So I would say, turn your focus back to yourself and your Iman um and strengthening your iman and when when good is meant to come for you i promise you it won't pass you by it's not missing you allah is not giving it to the wrong person it's just not your time yet babe and i pray that for everyone out there that is seeking a spouse i pray that allah gives you exactly what you want and what you need and allah makes it a thing that is good for you i mean i mean i mean how's your new job hated my old job but my new job now is very nice I don't want to get married and have kids, but I'm kind of scared. I'll be lonely when I'm geriatric. Even getting married and having kids, there's no promise of companionship throughout your life. So do whatever is going to make you happy. If you don't want the responsibility of a husband and a child, don't do it. Someone said, would you rather be a mermaid or a fairy? I would only be a fairy if they were life size. I wouldn't want to be like a Tinkerbell. But I would be a mermaid for sure. What advice does someone to help build their confidence? Um, realize that we're all human beings and you cannot shame a person who is unashamed. 
So the alternative to not being confident is to being insecure. And for what? In front of who? All these regular, regular people? Girl, bye. How to deal with emotional abuse from your mother while still pleasing Allah? Um, creating boundaries. Realizing that a very important Islamic obligation is the preservation and the care for self. So if you have a mother that is abusive, I'm not suggesting that you cut ties of kinship, of kinship, but I'm suggesting you take the space and the time that you need to, to take care of yourself. To the point where I heard a sister say her parents were such horrible narcissistic abusers that she won't talk to them, she won't go see them, but she'll send them an email just to kind of keep that family tie. Someone said, if you could live anywhere in the US, where would you move to? I would stay in Jersey, babe. I'm a, I'm a Jersey girl. I don't want to leave my city now. Like it got to the point where I'm old enough and mature enough that I love living in Jersey. And I don't want to leave. Are you still using dating apps? If so, can you do another video about them? We will be, actually today, I'm starting a video reviewing another dating app. So perfect time. Are you going to be in Michigan next weekend? I was in Michigan, yep. Are you booed up? No, no, I had my breakup in February. I've talked to a couple people since then. And the fact of the matter is I just don't feel ready. I don't feel that usual kind of openness and vulnerability. I don't feel that excitement. I don't really feel that desire to be coupled, to have a companion like I did before. So until I can return or go to a place where I'm feeling open, where I'm feeling light, where I'm feeling hopeful, I don't think it's worth it for me to date. Your views about interracial marriage, couldn't care less. If you could live anywhere in the world at any time, where would you choose and why? I would choose Haiti, I think, back in the day, so I could see what they was doing. Where did you get your amazing sense of humor? I come from a very lively and bubbly and social family on both sides, so I'm pretty sure from there. Someone said, how do you deal with talking stages? Personally, feel like I'm not built for it, no patience. Me neither. Me neither. Or it really could just could be the fact that I've been having talking stages that are not fun, but I'm not interested. Again, take that with a grain of salt because of where I am in my life. Cliche, but where do you see yourself in five years time, inshallah? In five years time, I will be 32. I see myself being fine as ever. I would like to have a child or two or three by then. Allahu alam, because I'm already 27. <laughs> Having three kids in five years is kind of crazy, especially when I'm not even married right now. So yeah, hopefully I'm still doing something that I love. Hopefully I'm still somewhere that I love with people that I love. I mean, I mean. How do you cope with the fact that time's going too fast? September is next month. I don't. I'm fighting for my life. I'm struggling. I'm struggling with the fact that time is going so fast. Um, but I'm also reminding myself that I'm not on my time. We're all on the lost time. So number one, there's nothing we can do to stop time. But also number two, we vibing. What can we do but vibe? What can we do but vibe? Nothing 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 but yes those are all the questions thank you guys so much for tuning in to this video thank you guys so much for keeping up with my page thank you for the continued blessings and prayers and the wonderful comments thank you for being a listening ear thank you for being so encouraging and so kind and so compassionate and i will see you on the next video bye assalamu alaikum